Hi guys, it's Erin, and I just wanted to share some backgrounds that I made in my art journals with these Magicals from Lindy's Stamp Gang. What they are is a pigment powder that's basically color in powder form with some, you know, gum arabic and binders and stuff. And as you can see here, when you sprinkle it and then spray water, you get this wonderful, vibrant um, liquid that, when it's dry, is permanent. So unlike other sprays like the dilutions and distress sprays and stuff like that, you can actually get this stuff to, you know, once it's dry, it's going to stay there. So I thought that I would make a bunch of different backgrounds in my, um, in my art journals ahead of time so that when I wanted to go and work on them again, I would have these permanent backgrounds that I could use any other mediums. I could use gel medium. I could use stencils. I could use paints, whatever I wanted. And the background that was on there is not going to move. And that's kind of really what sold me on these because I've, I've seen Marta and a bunch of other people use these before. In, um, they come in little pots as well as these shakers. And the, the only thing that I never heard was that they're permanent when they're dry. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to do. This technique was something that I knew would, would stick on the paper and just, you know, here's a random background and you can actually uh, – not worry about moving it depending on what type of medium you wanted to use. Even if I was using matte medium or something to glue something down, I'd have to worry about dilutions moving or, you know, my distress sprays and stuff. So the, this was kind of the impetus for me to say, you know, what, I'm just going to go ahead and get them. The only thing that had been holding me back really was the idea that the, they, they usually come in little circular pots that, you know, you can open and everything. But the thing that worried me was breathing them because, you know, I have cystic fibrosis and there is a big warning on there that says don't breathe them and don't get them in your eyes, which I'm not planning on putting them in my eyes. But I do cough a lot and I was worried that I would have one of those little pots open and I'd be working and all of a sudden cough and poof. So <laughs> that's why I was really happy when they came out with these shakers because it's like, okay, shake, close, and the, the opening is so tiny as it is. So there's no way that I could spill it or lose any of this wonderful pigment powder, you know, and have to worry about breathing it or anything. I did end up still wearing a mask just in case, but that's because I'm neurotic, so I'm sure that that's not something a normal person needs to do. But yeah, just, just for my own issues, I did uh, wear a mask during these videos. And um, you can see I'm just doing the simple technique of sprinkling it on my craft mat which is just a uh, one of those office mats that you use to protect the floor so that your your office chair moves. I, I sprinkled it on there, I sprayed some water, and I'm just dragging my art journal in complete randomness and then drying it in between. And you can see here I wanted some red, so I just sprinkled it directly on the paper. Um, I found that my Dilutions journal did not appreciate the amount of water that I was using on this to activate and make sure that all of these little crystals were dissolved, because if it's not all dissolved, those crystals that aren't dissolved are not going to be permanent. So you can see here I'm using quite a lot of water, and uh, the Dilutions paper did not appreciate that, and especially on that page there, it was like pilling and trying to rip up, but it, it's not a terrible deal. I found that they did work better on the, the gessoed pages that I had. Um, you saw there was one with uh, diamond patterns that, that's pre-gessoed and it had transparent texture paste on it. So that's how I got those diamonds on there, it was texture paste. And um, so the gesso did protect the paper more because, I mean, it's it's mixed media manila cardstock or whatever, but it's still cardstock. It's not like you're using, you know, um, watercolor paper or anything like that. This is a lot of water that I'm asking this paper to just soak up, and it, it didn't appreciate it the more that you touched it. But um, I did still get pretty good results. The, the powders are slightly iridescent, like they've got some shine in them. It's not like Stickles. It's not like, um, it's not like Wink of Stella or anything like that. It's just a little subtle shine to it. And I find that I can't see it too much once it's dry. When it's wet, you can still see the shine. But once it's dry, there's not a whole lot there, which works for me personally because I don't like a lot of shine. But if you are looking for something shiny, I think that they do have things. Uh, I think Landy Stamp Gang does have much shinier products than these Magicals. Or, you know, there's always the sprays that they have. I think it's the same formula, so they might still be... Uh, they might still be permanent when dry. You would have to ask them because I don't have any, so I don't know. I just got these because I had, you know, I'd been looking at them forever, and I finally heard that key word, permanent when dry, 
which, you know, I, I don't know how many of Marta's videos I have watched, probably all of them, and I never saw that. I, I mean, I'm sure she had to have said it at some point, right? But yeah, I had no clue. So <laughs> now I'm, you know, sitting here happily just, this is my big Dilusions journal, and I figured it's brand new. There's only two pages done. Let's wreck the crap out of it. So I did a bunch more in here. And I, you can see I was pointing to some of the un, uh, undiluted undiluted powder in there. And does, you really want to make sure that all of that powder is getting diluted if you want to you know, have it not move later. There's little spots on here where you can see more of the powder, but if you touch it with water, they didn't move, so it was still, it was still good. But yeah, that's definitely something you have to be aware of. And I'm drying the layers in between so that when the layers are dry and I push it back into the water, the what's underneath isn't going to be, you know, isn't going to move or be wet. So that way, I get this multi-layered background that I'm going for. Um, this isn't the way that I normally work, so it's going to be kind of a challenge for me because usually I'm like, okay, I have an idea, I want to make this kind of page, and then I make that kind of page. And this is a much more random and fluid kind of way of just paging through your journal and saying, I want to use this, now what can I use with this? And it's a complete gear shift for me, but that's why I thought it would be fun, because what is your art journal supposed to be? But, you know, just experimenting and having fun, right? So I thought I would build all of these different backgrounds, and I would be able to do that. And um, the, the colors are fabulous. I mean, you can see here the, the bright, vibrant of red that, uh, that this has. It only has, um, it has the, you know, the red, green, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, that, that kind of stuff. And then there's a black and a brown. I didn't use the black and the brown because I have a feeling that the brown would have ended up making mud where I didn't want mud. I think if I'm going to use brown, I have to know what I'm doing before I'm going to use brown. Otherwise, it ends up looking too distressed. And while I like Tim Holtz, I don't like the you know distressed style for the most part. Um, so I didn't want to do that. And I have seen the black, and it's very black. Like, it's not even kidding. Oh, I was showing there. Like, these are literally brand new, and my little shaker top is coming off on this teal one. I don't know why it's already coming off, but... Yeah, it's the little, you know, how you open it and has the little plastic piece that, you know, helps it hinge. It's like ripped. I don't know why, but it's not enough to return it, obviously, because it's an entire set and there's one wrong with it, so whatever. But um, I really like how these layer together, and as you can see, I'm using all these different colors, and I haven't made mud yet. There's not there's not one where it's, like, gross. Um I, I do happen to know the color wheel and what will and won't make mud, but the point is that they, they're blending really, really well. And that's one of the things that I appreciate about this product, that, uh, that it did make all these interesting swirls and, and combinations. I mean, there's, there's three colors in here, and you can see the different shades and everything that it's getting just from the, uh, the mixing that they do. It's, it, it, you know, I don't, uh, you know, it's, it's magical, right? <laughs> So, yeah, I was very happy with uh, with all the backgrounds that I got from this. So you can just make sure that you're getting all of those all of those things dissolved. But it is a lot of water that I'm asking these journals to take, and you can see the paper just is like, mm, I don't want to take any more of this. <laughs> it's starting to pill. You can see it just on the camera. But you know, as it is permanent after this. Um, once it dries, it's gonna. I'm gonna be able to add more water on top, and it will probably help as as it's already got a layer on there. I'm not saying it'll help like if I had gesso on there previously, but it's definitely going to help that there's more layers on there when I start building on top of it, or you know, adding. You know, once you add glue and all of that stuff, the paper does end up stiffening up a bit. There was one of these that the water ended up going through, like to the backside. Most of these pages that I'm using are blank on the bullet, you know, front and back because these journals are pretty new. But there was one where it did bleed through, so I'm going to have to try and figure out, you know, what to do with those pages. And here I'm just going to give you a flip through of all of the, you know, what they look like dried, all of the pages that I've made in both of these journals. And I really like this one. And the the fun thing about this is you can see everybody's going to see something different in these backgrounds and if I decide to like pick out images or something that I might see or you know a landscape or whatever from them 
it'll be interesting to see if that's what you saw when you looked at it versus what I saw when I started to work with it. Um, so it's it is like I said, it's a it's a definite gear shift from the way that I normally make journal pages, but it's also exciting because I have no idea what I'm going to do, and it's one of those things where you know you just start, you know, just just open it and start, and it's not having to start with a blank page either because there's all these patterns and and cool things going on. So anyway, I hope you like this. I hope it was informative. I'm sorry I coughed in the middle. That's why it was quiet for a second, but. Um, Thank you for watching, and I hope that I will finish these, you know, at least one of them on camera for you guys to see how it turns out. So, all right, have a great day. Bye-bye.